الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی و صحبه و سلم اما بعد احبت في الله ان سنن ابن ماجه It was related to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which shows us the importance of following his sunnah. And his sunnah is by following his commands and avoiding his prohibitions. قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا أَبُو بَكَرِ بِنْ أَبِي شَيْبَةِ قَالَ حَدَّثَنَا شَرِيكِ عَنْ أَعْمَشِ عَنْ أَبِي صَالِحِ عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ قَالْ قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما أمرتكم به فخذوه وما نهيتكم عنه فانته The Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تلا عنه Whatever I have commanded you to do, do it. And whatever I have forbidden you, refrain from it. Ahabatifillah, very simple commandments from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we've already established on countless occasions, in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah, that following the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is following Allah Azza wa Jal. And so by avoiding, by reading the Sunnah and studying the Sunnah and gaining Ilm al nafiyah beneficial knowledge which is that of the Quran and the Sunnah then you will know in general what to practice and what to avoid because the only way you're gonna know what's really right and wrong is by knowing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how you're going to know the commandments of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And that's how you're going to know the prohibitions from the Quran and the Sunnah. The Quran being the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed to the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. And the Sunnah being the message revealed on the tongue of the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. That's for that's what is required of us to practice. The Prophet ﷺ also said in another hadith, Leave me as I have left you. Meaning, don't ask me the minor things that I have avoided to tell you. For those who came before you were doomed because of their questions and differences with their prophets. If I command you to do something, then do as much of it as you can. And if I forbid you from doing something, then refrain from it. That's also Sunan. Uh, Sunan uh, Ibn Majah. So, an important benefit we gain from this hadith, Ahabat Tifillah, is it shows us not to be excessive in asking about things which were not mentioned and prohibited in the Quran and the Sunnah. So, an example is some people are so, because of their zeal, they want to practice, they want to do good. They want to stay away from that which is evil. And they want to command the good and forbid the evil. But in their zeal, and through a lack of knowledge, they ask questions about every single meticulous thing. Things that maybe perhaps from a mercy of Allah upon His creation that were not spelled out in the Quran and the Sunnah. That as long as they don't, in general, contradict clear Quranic principles and clear Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that perhaps it's best left left alone. And yes, it is from taqwa. to want to know what and how to practice. 
But we're talking about being excessive because the Prophet ﷺ himself mentioned that it is excess. So my advice is to learn and stick as closely to Ahlul Ilm, the scholars, and those grounded students of knowledge that benefited from the scholars, that we should strive our best to learn from them and learn the Arabic language if you're able to and strive to increase your knowledge and learn what the ulama of Ahl sunnah say in order to better practice your religion and to be away from the shubahat and the shahawat and to know what the commands of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept my good and forgive my evil, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam.